Well, fellers, about to uh, kick this painting off. Um, it's the day after I primed it. Everything dried up, it looks good. Um, I've decided that I'm going to paint the transmission and clear it today uh, in the bell housing part. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna go ahead and paint the frame rails. Um, and I'll show you why. Here's the old frame rails. I went ahead and sanded out the runs as well. And here's the old engine and transmission assembly. Um, the problem is to paint, especially clear, um, clear is really runny. So it's very easy to bang stuff with the hose and with the gun. You gotta get a consistent coat. And here's the problem. This is my gun, y'all have seen that before. But even using the right cup, that's just taped on there so that plastic don't fall off. Basically, to get up in there, see this angle? To get the bottom of the frame rail, the only way to do that is basically to hold the gun upside down like this. Kind of a funky angle. Kind of hold it here and just run it down. But if you look, everything on the frame rail is gonna be wet, right? But my gun is so close to the transmission, especially here. I mean, I'm too close to shoot the clear there unless I'm touching the transmission. So there's just no way to see the setup. You can also kind of stick it down underneath and kind of try to shoot up through that crack, but you cannot get a good consistent coat of clear. Not that the bottom of the frame rail really needs a real consistent coat of clear, but so I'm gonna go ahead and mix up my front, my uh, base coat, and I'm gonna go around first, and I'm just gonna shoot it into nukes and crannies like that, and down in there, where those, uh, where my cup is, right there, anywhere where it's gonna be hard to get good coverage, and I'll just try to get a, just a dust coat on those areas, and just skip everything else for a minute. Like I'm gonna try to get the back bottom of these bolt heads. I'm gonna try to get good solid coverage, so. My first little pass will just be to hit those areas and nothing else. I don't want to have a uh, problem with, you know, light spots on the backside of bolts or on the bottom of bolts or whatever. So I'm going to mix my base coat up. I'm going to set you guys up and just hit those areas real quick. This is really difficult. See, I'm whacking the frame with it. Not intentionally. This is gonna suck to clear.
gonna dust coat everything. Can't get it in there hardly. I'm gonna go to the other side. It's gonna be a little more challenging over here. Well, that's the first coat of base. I just went ahead and put it on a little bit heavier. It wasn't showing any tendency to run, so it looks pretty good. It'll be flashed off in about five minutes. It's not a 100% color coverage coat. Like there's still light spots, like a little bit right there. But I got it about 90% covered. So when I give this good flash time, um, let it set for a little short period of time and uh, I'll put one more coat in. And uh, the objective of my last coat will be just to basically just darken up any lighter areas. Anything that's got plenty of paint on it is not gonna get much, but it's extremely difficult to get like up behind there because there's no clear path that you can shoot the gun to get back there. You just kind of gotta fog it in there, hope it gets everywhere. That's why you do it in more than one coat. So, um, I'll probably just shoot the last coat of base off camera and then as far as the clear goes, you saw me struggling with how to get the thing, the gun in there. Okay. Okay. 
He wants food. It's my wife. She wants to be on camera. Anyways, I probably won't let you watch all the clear because I'm gonna need both hands on the gun. So I'll probably set you up for my last coat and let you uh, watch me spray it. Maybe the first coat, that'll be more dramatic, but it'll be on an easy spot. Everything else is gonna be hard. So it's just gonna have to be a one man show. All right, the second and uh, last coat of base coats on. This was definitely the right choice because I have been all up in that frame reel. You can see other spots down there where I touched it. All I did is wipe wet base coat off, but that was definitely the right choice. I've been whacking that gun all over the frame rails. There's no way I could have done that without making a mess, but it looks pretty good. If I'd have gone with semi-gloss black, this is what it would have uh, looked like. So I'll give you a, a before and after when I get done, but I went ahead and shot some of these brackets that are really hard to get you know, a good coverage on while I could get to it easy today without having to worry about everywhere else. So got a good coat on those. Started to get a little bit on that clutch linkage. Uh, again, same thing there. It'll just take a little off. As long as I coat that within about 24 hours, I'm good. So tomorrow, the frame rails will be a breeze. So this thing was the pain in the butt. So what I'm gonna do is mix my clear. I'm gonna shoot the accessory drive you know, off camera. And then I'll bring you back when I shoot the uh, top and maybe the bottom on one side. It's pretty sweet. Now what's gonna happen? So I'm gonna get this done, get the truck back on the road, and this is gonna blow up. I'm gonna have to take it out, scratch it all up. But I'll mix up the clear and I'll bring you back when we hit this. You gotta keep a wet edge. You can't let any one point dry too much. So I gotta come back over here, then go back up top, kind of.
Really looking good. Well, that turned out pretty good. Don't even see any big runs or drips anywhere. Sure looks better than it did before, that's for sure. Well, tomorrow we will tackle the frame reels. It'll be easy. Well, here we are. Got to mix up some base coat and uh, shoot these frame reels. You can see I was telling you the other night how uh, fragile base coat is. That was just overspray, so it just immediately just wipes off with just a tiny bit of a thinner on a rag. I got this thing wrapped like a mummy. So it should be pretty easy to get in there and shoot everything, especially since I already got this and got most of the paint on that bracket. It's really all I got to work around. And since my cup is plastic, I don't really have to worry about whacking that. I mashed that guy off in the blue tape there, mainly just to keep uh, from getting paint on it when I'm blasting it off into that corner there. So I really got to shoot it up in there. And if my gun crosses that thing with you know only an inch to spare it'll immediately just run off on the floor um, the weather conditions I would say right now for shooting paint is horrible I mean terrible we've had a 25 30 mile an hour wind gusts all day it's horrible conditions for doing this it won't be quite as bad on the inside of the frame rails but trying to shoot this way into the wind it's gonna be fun I've waited as long as I can in the afternoon. Hopefully the wind will die down a little where I won't have to finish in the uh, dark. But first thing I'm gonna do, mix up a little bit of base and just kind of, you know, tickle those holes a little bit. Probably won't worry about much of the rest of it. And uh, once I'm sure that I got a good coat on all the way around the holes, basically I'll come out here and lay down one real good wet coat and then do a follow-up just with whatever base coat I got left all right so I got a uh, what I'd call a tack coat just something on there mainly around the holes make sure I get every angle like I said the rest of it is just a sprinkling just enough to you know give it some bite now on the subject of overspray and like this this is gonna be coming off real soon see how nasty and rusted that thing is I'm gonna be taking this off here real quick sandblasting it and then probably painting it with the same stuff and or powder coating it I don't know yet I don't know how hot that gets that close to the stack but anyway so I don't give a rip if it gets any uh, overspray on it doesn't matter masking it off isn't going to help anything so I'm going to be shooting this as you can see inboard outboard the frame rail I just aimed it off back in that hole shot the best I could it's pretty much the only good thing about the wind is it's going to flash quick. When your uh, first tack coat or your first regular coat of base dries, that's when you come along and once it's totally flat, you can wipe out dust or bugs. Fortunately, there's nobody driving over there or in my driveway kicking up dirt. So I caught a few wind breaks, so I just hogged it on there when the wind wasn't blowing. So see how terrible the paint looks back in there. So when I change this all out, probably either here or well probably right here I'll just have to pop a line mask everything off there and then sandblast that mess I don't think I'm gonna find much rust or anything but it's gonna look really terrible until I get that done so I guess that'll be my incentive so well I'm gonna uh, stand around and wait for this uh, to flash off and then I'll pile on a first coat see there's still some shinier spots that means this needs about five ten minutes max and I'll give it a real quick wipe down and set you up and you can watch me pile on the actual coat like I said I'll only can watch the outside well the wind is still ripping and I'm running out of base coat fast so I'm gonna hit the light areas and then just real quick do a uh, full pass so I got to do the outside on the other side so probably have to mix more but you don't ever want to run out right in the middle of the panel. It's not as critical with a solid base coat, but.
going to do the top real quick. Super careful when I do the clear. It's gonna be ridiculous. I'm basically gonna have to completely do the inside, then come outside and make sure that I'm not reaching over. I'm gonna have to hit every square inch of the inside first. No way I can be reaching across it. My share flow and just This is what she looks like with no uh, clear coat on it yet. That area there in the back side of that is absolutely horrible. I am so glad I didn't try to paint all that at once. Would not have happened. It would have been a mess. I would have messed up my paint. Losing light quick. Beautiful sunset. Wish I could be watching it. Anyways, I got just enough light that I can kind of see what I'm doing. So... I'm going to go mix my clear, crawl under there, and hope for the best. Bring you back when I'm doing the outside. Well, this has been about as much fun as I thought it would be. The insides are done. Now the outsides. This is the easy part. The inside, it's all black. I can't see. It's darker than it actually looks through the camera. So I'm just praying that I've done it long enough that I don't have runs everywhere.
I can't see a reflection. Well, hopefully it's all right. As you can see, I can't tell right now. I ran out of clear on that side while I was kind of in the, in the process. So I had to go mix more. I didn't have enough hardener, so it might take longer for that to dry. Can't tell if I run anything and neither can you. So I guess in the morning we shall see together. Well, good morning, y'all. Let's go over here and see how she turned out. I looked at it a little while ago. Looks pretty good. Not perfect, but when you're shooting outside in adverse weather conditions, you get what you get. Well, here's the uh, back half that I just made look really terrible. Really, I'm pretty happy with it. Like I said, from about here back, will eventually get sandblasted and repainted so really I only tried to make it real nice from here forward it turned out really good I mean super cloudy so it's kind of hard to tell kind of exactly what we're dealing with here you really can't see a good shot didn't really get any runs that was my big concern or dry spray that was my second concern turned out pretty good I must say the only thing that I really found that uh, was any kind of a problem at all is sometimes when you're dealing with high humidity or whatever you get a little bit of dull in your uh, finish because it doesn't dry right which you can kind of see just a little bit here up here where it's kind of shielded from the with the cab you know where the cab had some radiant heat in it you can kind of see where it went from a little dull, started getting shinier, like all up into there, it's totally normal. That just happens when uh, your surface temperature and the temperature of your materials changes. I mean, it's really not even noticeable. Most people wouldn't notice it at all, but usually you can hit that with a buffer and it'll come out and look just like the rest of it. But that's really the only area that uh, looks anything at all unlike what I would want it to. See the same on that side, the exact same spot. Slight doling right there in the middle. But as far as dust and trash, I mean, it's really good. And I am glad this clear dried fast, because look at this. My idiot cat decided to get up there and walk around on it. Another thing I'm not used to when I'm painting in a paint booth, but I'm not gonna touch it, but it didn't get into the paint at all, so. Fortunately, that was a win. Clear probably had just got to the point where it wasn't going to be affected by her walking in it. Oh, I do got to show you something on the other side. Now I'm going to be wanting to do the rest of the frame because this finish here is a little uh, compromised compared to the rest of it. Another downside to shooting outside. Where did it go? I saw this last night in the dark. Yep. He is clear coated in. I am not gonna touch it right now. Let let it get nice and hardened and then uh, get him out. Fortunately, he didn't get his body into it. So just the end of his legs. So part of him will be part of this truck forever. I'm super happy with it really. Starting to look better. Well, 
I appreciate y'all joining me for uh, this little round of painting on the old truck. Um, wasn't too bad, mainly just weather fighting you, but that's pretty much a goes with the territory, so to speak. So on the next episode, a couple of things I, I would like to get to, I don't know if we'll make it. Um, these are my fuel tank brackets. And I didn't measure real close when I uh, was mocking these up uh, months ago, a year ago, whenever it was. Um, the stock freight lane liner air tanks have like an eight inch diameter. Uh, problem is they're like this long, so that's too short which puts it like here. Uh, and the way these tuck up in the frame rail, the frame rail is like right here. So they clear just fine on the bottom of the frame rail, which is about where my hand is. However, the stock air tanks for the International are an inch and a half larger diameter, which puts them like here. Y'all saw me in this video fighting, try, or maybe last video, trying to fight them in there problem is with the larger tank diameter the frame rail is like here where this thing would you know won't clear it's hitting it just on this part here so uh, I recently acquired a really nice set of air tanks which you'll see in another video maybe next week or maybe you'll see it before this video depends on how it all works out but long story short I got a really good set of factory tanks so what I need to do to these is cut these welds here and basically add an inch and a half or inch and three quarter to this strap so that I get it where it'll come all the way down here and clear the frame rail. So that'll be really easy. I can just cut some uh, flat stock, you know, just add an inch and a half, weld it back on and my strap instead of being here and hitting the frame rail will be here where it's supposed to be. I did price some eight inch diameter air tanks. I found a really beautiful set that's on the uh, one of the big truck suppliers, Rainey's, or I forget which, but they're like 500 bucks a piece, and that's a thousand bucks total, and that's just stupid when I can use something I already have. Uh, another thing I would like to do is uh, mount this fella on top of the transmission, because right now, this thing here, right on the top of the transmission, is just wrapped in plastic and tape, and uh, not really sealed super awesome from the weather. Short term, it's totally fine, but I need to get this back on it. Get it totally sealed up. Do not need water in my transmission. I would also like to go ahead and uh, heat treat the shaft from a shift box and put this all together. That would be great. Uh, lastly, for sure I know I'll get to this, is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make my repairs on these Cross member brackets so that they can be painted. So that will for sure be on it, just be some welding. But that'll be, all be in the next round, or some of it. I don't know, depends. But appreciate you all joining me, and uh, we'll see you for the next round.